Alrighty, welcome back to the van build, ladies and gentle worms. We have another bit of a mishmash on our hands for this week's video. There's the applying finishing touches to the face of the control panel, i.e. actually putting things in it and making it into a control panel. And then the base and the frame for the right upper cupboard. First up with the front of the control panel. As you'll see, I actually did this before I fit the right wheel arch block, but shh, we're trying to create videos that make a little bit more sense here. The process was pretty simple. I essentially took the panel and then put the components on it and drew around them to create the requisite holes that I would need. One of them is a circle and the other is a square. More, well, more of a slight rectangle. But the process is pretty much the same for each one. I drilled four little holes using like a four millimeter bit, something like that, and then expanded them to bigger holes, the eight millimeter bit, which seems to be just about big enough to fit my jigsaw blade in. And then kind of cut to join the holes up in a semi-circular or rectangular manner. The circle was definitely a lot harder to do than the rectangle because you're like constantly turning. The rectangles are like quite a bit easier really. Thankfully you do have a bit of wiggle room with these things because there's always a bit of a lip that sticks out over the hole. So it doesn't have to be perfect, which is great. And both of them have a mechanism for securing it in place. It's just screws for the inverter switch and the, it's a screw on the back type thing for the battery monitor. So they cover up your mistakes nicely. And for some reason, the battery monitor has like a square plate stick over the top, which I just found a little bit insulting. Like you've made me drill, you, you've made me cut out a circular hole, which was way harder than it needed to be. And now you're going to make me make it look square? No, I will be showing off my circular holes. Thank you very much. Pa. Next up, I fully wired up and stuck in place the 12 volt and USB ports that sit above the desk. They're actually the ones that get very little use day to day because they were more put in as future proofing because I figured you can't really have enough of these things. And I don't really know why I did them at this point. I think it was just because the wiring was there. I figured I'd just get it done because it's quite nice to see the finished product. And they're blue, which is actually quite annoying and I wouldn't do again because even with the little flappy lid closed, you still get a bit of blue light leaking out. I only really bought them because they were the only um, two amp USB socket sets that were in stock at the time and I kind of just got matching 12 volt sockets. Um, yeah, it's not the end of the world because I tend to turn my power off at night anyway, just to save draw from the monitor, the monitor, the, the screen, the, the controller, the screen of the controller for the heater. <laughs> now I did also at this point build a basic frame for where the heater was going to go in the back, but I'm not going to really cover that now because it doesn't really make any sense. It was just to make sure that I had it cordoned off so I didn't put anything that was going to overlap it and get in the way. So I'll cover that when I actually do the diesel heater install video. Now onto the main event, the right upper hand cupboard. The first step was to create an end for what I'd done already that kind of stuck on the end of the control panel bit, control panel and shelf. And I hadn't done one on the other side, which I sort of regretted at the time. Now I don't really mind that much. It gives a little bit of extra space and kind of overhang between the different bits. I mean, it sometimes means that things can slide around between the shelf and the cupboards, but I've got everything quite tightly packed up there so it doesn't really happen in practice. Yeah, it would have been neat to put an end on, but it's given me a tiny bit more space. Can't really complain that much. The first step was to use a bit of cardboard, which keen eyes will notice is from cutting out the template for the wall plywood as a template for getting the feel for the shape of the end. It's in a case of like roughly cutting out a rectangle and going in to get the details. I didn't try to get it too close initially with the template. I just wanted to get a rough idea of what I was doing. And then we had quite a long process of just going back and forth and gradually taking more and more off it to get closer and closer. And it was quite time consuming to kind of get the curve of the ceiling and get the, the notchy bit for the batten on the ceiling and the curve of the wall and stuff. Uh, but I did get there in the end and I think it turned out fairly well. You can't really see most of the top bit now, but it does enclose the cupboard pretty nicely. I made this piece out of 12mm poplar ply, which is in keeping with what I use for the rest of the upper cupboards. In retrospect, I definitely could have gotten away with smaller 9mm ply, but 
I figured because it was overhead and would potentially be holding a reasonable amount of weight, I wanted it to be really strong. I think it would have been perfectly strong enough with 9mm ply. And in this cupboard in particular, it just ended up being the storage location for all my like jackets and hoodies and things like that. So it really doesn't hold very much weight at all. This one definitely could have been 9mm and probably the other ones could too because I'm not storing really heavy stuff in there just in case it somehow flies out or gets in a position where it will fly out when I open the door. I don't really want to have a, a massive jar of gherkin smash me in the face or something like that. I had at this point started using an electric sander to sand the ply before putting it in place and before using it. Definitely a very handy tool to have. Thankfully I didn't have to buy one though because my mum had one up in the loft which I used and worked perfectly fine. I probably would recommend getting one for doing something like this because there is a lot of sanding to do and it's very helpful to just get like a nice smooth finish but it isn't strictly necessary if you had a really tight budget i'm not sure whether i would have made the decision to buy one if i didn't have one available already at the time probably would have regretted it if i hadn't have though so after fixing the end piece in place i did a lot of measuring and cross measuring to get the position for the lower support still took quite a lot less time than making the end piece though even with all the cross checking i'd already cut out a rectangle for the base because I did know the dimensions fairly well coming into this. Uh, but then I just gave it a sand and started attaching battening to it. So first up was a batten that will run along the front that the upper supports will connect to, which I set in a little bit to get it closer to matching the position on the ceiling so that everything could join up without being too wonky. I also attached batten along each edge, but left space for the batten that's sitting on the wall for it to all join up to. I did something a little bit differently here to how I did on the left cupboards, which was that I used some L brackets in addition to some screws at the bottom to secure it to the support that was on the wall. Not entirely sure why I chose to do this because I still did use screws at the bottom. So it's not like I was getting a benefit of like hiding the hardware. And yeah, I don't really know what the benefit was. I think it just made it more awkward, to be honest. I don't think I would do that again. And actually while I was examining this, to write the script, I just realized that I didn't re-screw most of the screws on the left hand upper cupboard. So there's actually only two screws in the whole thing and a load of screw holes, but no screws. <laughs> so it's all being held up by the upper support and two screws. I guess, good job, the upper supports are solid. Otherwise that would have come crashing down already. Uh, probably should fix that though. So fitting the vertical supports here was pretty similar process to before, but again, kind of convoluted but i think a little bit less convoluted than before attach the base to the wall and then place the supports in to see where they should fit on the base with reference to the ceiling pencil in where the l bracket screws need to be then remove them from the wall drill the holes and fit the supports then reattach to the wall and do the same thing on the ceiling pencil marking where the brackets need to go on the top button the button on the ceiling then remove the base again drill the holes and put the base back and screw in finally. I'm not sure why I couldn't do this before. I did have a, maybe a little bit more space or maybe I just realized that I didn't need to do the screwing. I just needed to do the drilling. It was the drill that couldn't fit and actually I could fit the screwdriver in there. So it was just a little bit simpler than before without having to remove them from the base to reattach them to, to attach them to the ceiling to then attach the base on when it was on the wall. Still quite a the finicky process really but as I'd already done it once it was a bit more straightforward although as you'll see from the footage I'm still sort of faffing around on the floor quite a lot I don't really know what I was doing down there it's a, it's a bit of a mystery I think I was just doing a lot of checking to make sure that everything was right as I was going to try and avoid making any uh, disastrous mistakes and thankfully I didn't really make any disastrous mistakes at least not in the the cupboard building process so I, the process of constantly checking I think was a good one and I generally, the, the, the bits where I could do that a lot were the bits that I generated the nicest results, I think. So then it was just a case of making an end piece. And again, I used some cardboard for a template to get like a rough piece that was about right that I could just slowly cut down again to get to the right shape to fit the wall ceiling, the edgy bits and all that jazz. The biggest issue here was that the cupboard was very slightly shorter than the support on the ceiling um it stuck out by 
maybe like half a centimeter or something but because of that if i tried to just put the end directly on it it would have been really wonky and sticking out and weird so didn't want that i also didn't want to have to take down everything that i'd put up that was hinging off this which is probably the only other way that i could think of at the time to fix it i'm sure there are a lot of cleverer ways by cleverer people um so i went with the option of just trying to hack it down just cut this bit off in place on the ceiling and pretty much just use whatever i could get my hands on to do this so it was a mix of like hand saw and files and chisels and a little coping saw and i don't even know like i just i just used whatever i could to get it down and i definitely damaged the ceiling a little bit with some some scrapes and wasn't very happy about that but i did manage to get it off without completely ruining everything and actually i haven't really been bothered by the damage since so i think i did make the right decision even if it did have some rather large downsides <laughs> so yeah fixed the end in place gave it a sand boom donezo well at least for now on this bit obviously it needs doors but i didn't do them until a little bit later because I was distracted by other more important things, preparing for my first trip away in the van, which didn't really require cupboards with doors. That's it for this one. Sadly, I don't have a nice video of the finished product, but maybe it will appear at some point later out of the blue and surprise you all. Next week, we've got starting on the custom cool box that I built for the van, which is a little bit unique and interesting, I think, because I've not seen anyone do it in quite the way I did it and that's maybe because it wasn't a very good way of doing it but it does work and I think if I'd just done a couple of things differently it would be a lot more functional than it is but it still works and I'm still using it to this day so yeah thanks for watching likes subs comments much appreciated but I'll catch you next time see you later taters